that's all it took, apparently. Gears on violins, go figure. Um, and it was interesting, because as, as far as the subculture of steampunk goes, I, I, I think the, the, the lead singer of Abney Park said, says it very well. Steampunk is what happens when goths discover the color brown. <laughs> I know, I know some steampunkers who are like, oh, oh, no, no, it's so much more than that. <laughs> and, 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 and to a certain extent, that's very true. That, that is a very, very, like, round <laughs> and generous way of phrasing it. But in, at the same time, there is a lot of truth to it, because the goth subculture and the steampunk subculture do share a lot of common roots and a lot of common things, in fact, um, uh, despite the craziness of it all. Um, um, both go both goth and steampunk share. There's no real political agenda with either subculture, like a lot like punk was. Punk had a big like you know like we're, we've got an agenda, we've got a manifesto. Steampunk's like no, nah, we want to look cool, <laughs> much the same way that goth does. You know they they be, they focus primarily on an aesthetic. You know and now granted the aesthetic in steampunk is wider. Um, and cooler. Uh, uh, <laughs> th th this fine gentleman is actually one of the premier um, authorities on Victorian history and steampunk in general. Um, uh, J.D. Falkson, um, who's a fantastic guy. Um, and as you can clearly see, he is in fact steampunk in both of these. Um, granted, on the left, he's much more traditional, pure Victorian, and on the other side, well, he got a little nuts. <laughs> and that's okay, nuts is great. Um, or bolts. I'm sorry, or, or bolts for that matter. He could be bolts. Um, either way, he's a little screwy. <laughs> oh, good. I, I like this audio. Oh, all right, yeah, yeah, groan, groan at me some more. Um, so, right, so steampunk does this wonderful thing of it takes stuff and it makes it more awesome. Okay. Um, mostly by adding things, adding gears, adding pipes, adding flair to it, um, in, in that old-timey, unique, you know, um, very customized kind of deal. Um, and that's, of course, very key in keeping with a lot of the technology of the Victorian turn of the century era, where there was some mass production, but still a lot of stuff was hand done. It was, it was um, customized, and, I, and, and that's something that shows up in a lot of, lot of steampunk aesthetics. And I think one of the reasons that people really like steampunk is because it is so customizable to your particular taste. There is no hard and fast rules as to what is and is not steampunk. Um, you know, if you think it's awesome, go with it. Um, I mean, there are of course some, some, some general guidelines. Start with a big, you know, starting with a Victorian base, making it funky from there. That's awesome. But you can do all kinds of things. You can do Wild West steampunk. You can do um, because that was actually during the same timeline. Um, you, a lot of people don't realize that, but the Victorian era was totally the Wild West. Like, I mean, Victorian era was in England, Wild West was in you know the the, the forgotten half of the United States. You know, th that that barren track between California and you know Iowa or whatever it was at the time. Um, but I hear you asking, asking, because we're about to wrap this up, asking. Well, what about the cyberpunk subculture? Is there no subculture for the cyberpunks? And I have to say, there was, but not so much anymore. <laughs> because we're kind of all cyberpunks now. We got to the because I mean, how many of you are connected to the internet right now? Right now. Right now. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. We are all, we got, we hit the future, we are there. And maybe a little early, you know, Cyberpunk's usually like 2020 or so. But like, you know, we are in the future now. Um, and it's not quite the future we thought it would be. <laughs> but at the same time, it's a pretty freaking amazing future. You know, it's not quite as cool as we thought, because we have no flying cars. <laughs> And we're, yes, yes, yeah, uh, we're getting there. Um, right, hoverboards, three years, it's happening. Um, I, I know Nike patented self-lacing Velcro shoes or something, just like the other year. Um, anyway, so we got to the future. 
it's an amazing future. It's not quite as amazing as we thought it would be, but we're getting there. And it's not as dark as we feared it would be. We, yet. <laughs> yet. There's always that conditional yet, because there's always more future, right? But as it is right now, we are actually like in this kind of weird zone where we've gotten to a lot of the things we predicted. We are tied in with our machines, and we do live double lives between the real world and cyberspace. We're all on the Facebooks and the you know, MySpaces and the YouTubes. We have this online identity, even though we don't plug into a machine and go you know, hang out in a virtual chat room. Well, some of us do, but it's not quite the virtual chat room that we should work. Um, and so that just asks, well, where do we go from here? And I think that one of the reasons that steampunk is so popular right now is that steampunk focuses on an aesthetic and kind of a mindset. It focuses on looking cool, which is always awesome, um, but also having that adventure, that sense of going out there and having a direction, whereas cyberpunk varies like, the man, uh, you are not human, you are a machine, Keanu Reeves. <laughs> um, and so that direction is something that I think people find very appealing and why steampunk has become so very popular. And I believe we are...